Hello, in this video, we're going to look at map power analysis and projection. There are different methods that you can use in map power analysis and projection. But however, most of these methods are difficult in the sense that it is not easy to collect the data that are required when using those methods. In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the methods that are easily used and that whereby you can easily assess the data that are required for projection. Now, what are the, these methods? Let's quickly look at some of these methods. You have the employer's opinion method. You have the incremental labor output ratio method. You have the density ratio method. You have the international comparison method. You have the Panis Mediterranean regional project approach and others. According to Yusuf, the a population census by sex, age, level of training and education, industrial census or labor force. These are some of the methods that are easily used, that is very easy for us to use, irrespective of the type of country you are from, especially in the developing countries. Because there are other more complicated methods whereby you need some data, and such data are not easily available in developing countries. So let's walk through this method one after the other. The first one is the employer opinion method. This method is, a, is popular in making short-term forecasts for high-level manpower. In this method, employers of labor are asked through questionnaire their future manpower needs in quantity and time. This is applied mainly to organizations with at least 10 or more workers. After the submission of the questionnaire, a summation of all the estimates is done. Also, estimate of staff attrition, which is true debt and retirement is done. The result will give the demand of educated labor in future dates. So this can be expressed thus in the formula way. And the formula that we can easily use in doing this suggests whereby you have the M1, here you have the MT, and in the MT it gives us equals the LT plus this, where I what is most important here, let's look at the I. The I signify the different organizations, which means one, two, three, four, and so on. Because like what I said earlier on, the focus is on the organization. You're going to uh, pull them together, sum them together, and get the average. So what does each of these labels represent? This is more power demanded in target year T. That is for this. Then when it comes to this, what does it represent? That tells or labor demanded by employer I in target year T. This I is an organization. So we may have one, two, three, four, five to infinity number of organizations. What are the numbers that are demanded? Or setups. You can equally represent setups. What are the numbers that are demanded? Now you have the retirement in establishment I in year T. Then you have the number of deaths in establishment I in year T. The illustration. Let's look at the illustration now. If the summation of employers' manpower needs in year T is 50,000 50, and rejected, uh, re projected retirement is 5,000 and projected debt is 3,000, then what will be the manpower demand in year T? So look at this. We are looking at the manpower demand here in year T. And also we have been told that right here, if the summation of all the employers of manpower needs, where you from all the sectors is 50,000 and the projected retirement is 5,000 and the projected debt is 3,000. So to get this done, all we need to do is to apply the formula. In this case, you see that the 50,000 we have here is to this, which is the labor demanded by employer. So this is the labor demanded and we have the projected number of retirees and we have the projected number of debts. So when you add that, that gives you 8,000 minus Remove it from 50,000. 15,000 minus 8,000 gives you 42,000. So this will give us the 42,000 are the total number of map power that is demanded in year T. Having done that, again, the other method we need to look at is the incremental labor output ratio method. This method takes labor to mean a particular map power in a category of occupation. It takes out to mean industrial output or the national income. This method requires time series data. That is data over a period of years on output per month. This shall be classified by sector occupation and qualification. Many developing countries do not have this information. This method calculates the ratio at which labor increases output sector by sector, occupation by occupation, over a period of time. Such ratios are then assumed to remain constant for the future dates. So let's see how this works out. For example, 
if the labor output ratio increases, then the ratio of manpower production will be increased at the same ratio. If labor output in ratio increases by 2% across sector and occupation, the ratio of producing manpower by sector and by occupation will also be projected at 2%. But however, before you can use this method, you need to be very sure of the data that you collect from the sectors. And this is where we need to really look at. If you are not sure of the data, this method may not work out too well. Now let's look at the density ratio method. The density ratio method is also called the ratio of saturation. It's also called the ratio of saturation. And commonly used by the Russians, it is used for long manpower projection. And it passes through two stages. Stage one, you have to, the estimation of the stable fraction of qualified manpower in the labor force by sector, e.g. in the health sector. Take the fraction of medical doctor, pharmacists, laboratory scientists, medical record officers, and etc. Then apply this fraction to the demographic forecast of the total force as described along the sector of an economy. Now, you see that the first part that needs to be uh, taken is the estimation of the stable fraction. So there must be a stable fraction to know how many manpower is required in a particular sector. And within the sector, here we are using the medical sector. You look at the doctors, look at the pharmacists, look at the laboratory scientists, the medical record officers, and so on. The nurses will come in. So how many of each do you require? Again, if the fraction is wrong, it will equally project a wrong manpower. So let's see how this works out. Now, this is an example. If the demographic forecast of the total work labor force is 100,000, and if the stable fraction of graduates in the sector of an economy are, so in this case, it is assumed that right here, 100,000 uh, labor force is what is required. But by graduation, you have 1 over 10 graduating from the health sector, 1 over 8 from the education, 1 over 15 from engineering, 1 over uh, 6 on agriculture. And if these are made constant, they are stable. It means there is no change. Year in, year out, when they, the students are graduated from the university, this remains constant. Then it can be applied. If it's applied, what will you come up to? This fraction will be applied to the 100,000. So in that case, the head, which is 1 over 10 times 100, that will give us 10,000. 1 over 8 for education times 100,000, 12,500. Then for engineering, 1 over 50 times 100,000 will give us 6,667. Then agriculture, 1 over 6 times 100,000 will give us 16,667. It means these are the map power needs that will be supplied. 10,000 for health, 12,500 for education, 6,667 for engineering, 16,667 for agriculture. Now, you can go up further. Two, said you cannot use this same approach to project for each occupation in this sector. So let us pick one sector here. We are picking health. You know, this is the total that is required in the economy. Now, we are picking one set of health. So in health, if we, the what is required for health is 10,000. So this 10,000, how will it be spread across the labor force within health sector? So the labor force within health sector, you have the doctors, you have the pharmacists, you have medical lab scientists, you have the medical record officers, you have the uh, graduate nurses and others that will be required. So again, you have to work with fractions. This fraction again has to be stable. If they are stable, you now apply it times 10,000 times 10,000, and that will give you what will be required in all. Now, when you sum it up, it will give you a total of 10,000. This is what we need to do from time to time. Now, if you do this, what does it amount to? You will do this for all the settle to arrive at a country total estimates. In that case, you pick education, break it down again with labor force that is required in education. There, but something needs to be noted here. The problem with this method is that there is 
doubt concerning the assumption of a stable employment fraction scientifically to allow such application across sectors. This is, is this scientific or these fractions? That is why I said, because when you cannot ascertain this fraction as they are, it is difficult to actually go by these methods. Now let us look at the other method, the international comparison method. This is commonly used when there is limitation of data, especially in the developing nation or country. No time series data is required to use the method. What is required is to identify a developed country that shares certain characteristics with an aspiring developing country. Apply the indices of manpower production and set up productivity of such developed country to a plan to plan the developing country's manpower requirements. This is based on the assumption that for the attainment of equivalent level of productivity, parallel occupation group in the economies must have equivalent educational characteristics. So you discover that in this case, you're basically working on or depending on another country you feel share the same characteristics. Well, using this again has its own uh, limitation because before you pick on the international comparison method, you must ensure that the indexes that you are comparing are really, really safe or the difference wouldn't be, it's not significant. And when that happens, you'll be able to apply this method greatly.